Greetings, happy humans. What? You're not happy? Well, turn that frown upside down because today we're building an amusement park. Woo! Not only are we going to be making an amusement park with this fun kit, but we're going to learn the science behind the amusement park. What is kinetic energy? What makes bumper cars hover? Learn the science behind the fun. I am so excited to open up this box and see what's in here. Oh boy, what does this say? What makes swings rise? Woo! Oh boy, what's in here? Ah! <laughs> wow, that is a lot of cardboard. There are all kinds of things in there. Let's see what else we have. Oh wow, well. so excited. Let's open this up and see what's inside. <laughs> ah! Okay. Oh wow. Okay. I don't even I don't even know where to start. Wow, there's balloons in here. Oh sweet. Boy, this is gonna be fun. Okay. <laughs> ah! ah! My nail! My nail! <laughs> Mom's nails are still drying. They're still drying. Okay, wow, there is a lot of Plastic and cardboard and balloonage going on here. This looks like so much fun. Oh my gosh, that looks like the top to like a soap bottle. Two of those. Oh boy. And we even have some metal pieces. This is gonna be sweet. So we're gonna make some odd observations real quick. The first one we're gonna do ah, requires this little bitty metal ball, <laughs> which is like magnetically stuck to a bunch of other parts. We are going to roll this thing and see what it does. We wanted to see if it rolls in a straight line or in a circle. Woo! Woo! Okay, it goes in a straight line. Now we're going to try it and see if it will go in a circle. No! <laughs> ah! No! No, it will not go in a circle. <laughs> Okay, now we know. All right, we're gonna take one of our balloons and we're gonna put the ball inside. Okay, it goes in like that. Just gonna hold the ball in the bottom of this balloon and inflate the balloon. I hear it in there. Okay, it's probably big enough. <laughs> and now we're gonna tie it. Eee! I'm gripping my balloon up top and swirling it around and what's that little ball inside doing? <laughs> it's bouncing around the sides. Woo! And actually the quicker I move it, the higher up the balloon it goes. <laughs> you see it in there? Woo! That is so cool. And if I stop moving, the ball starts to go slower and slower and lower and lower. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. So when we rolled the ball on the floor, it moved in a line, but inside the balloon, the ball is moving in a circle. So why did that happen? A famous scientist named Isaac Newton showed how things move. He discovered that objects in motion tend to stay in motion, moving in a straight line. To get an object like your ball to change direction, you have to apply a force to it. The force that gets things to move in circles, like the amusement park swings and carousels, pushes or pulls an object toward the center to get it to move in a circle. Well, that is cool. So we're going to do this experiment again, but we're going to use um, this little hex nut instead of a ball. Put it in the balloon. Woo! All the way down at the bottom. Put it there, and I'm going to inflate it. Woo! Go. Try it. Ah! Okay, so now I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with the ball. Stop, it goes slower and slower and stops. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's that was weird. That was weird. <laughs> okay, so if you heard the screaming, that sound is the size of the hex nut 
vibrating against the balloon. Woo! So the ball didn't have vibration. It didn't scream like that. But the hex nut, it just goes crazy. <laughs> okay. Woo! Okay, for our next experiment, we're going to use this um, canopy piece. A couple more canopy pieces. Four strings. Two pieces. Ah! Two pieces of tubing. Four pieces of string. Did I already say that? <laughs> um, four nuts. Jiggers of these people on swings. Oh my goodness, some of them are having fun. Some of them are like, help me! And this dowel rod. Okay, if I pick up a piece of this string and I swing it back and forth, that's how a swing works. Like the type of swings that you find at the park or in your backyard. But swings at the amusement park are different, and we're going to try to make one of those swings. Alright, so I'm going to take my pieces of string here, and to the bottom of each one, I'm going to tie one of these washers. Okay, each one. There's two. There's three and four. And for fun, we're gonna put these stickers on either side of the washer. <laughs> this kid looks like he's enjoying himself. He's got his tongue flying in the wind. <laughs> Go. This little girl's looking a little scared, a little freaked out. Excited blonde boy. little brunette and done. There are little holes in our canopy here and we're going to poke the strings up through the canopy holes like this. Ah! Oh, only part of it came up. Oh no! <laughs> okay, and after we do that, we're going to Double knot it so that it will not come loose. Okay, there's one. That's two. That's three. Ah. All right, and number four. So now I'm gonna put on a piece of this tubing onto the dowel rod. Poke the dowel rod through here. Go on. Now don't rip. Don't rip. Okay. Ah. Okay. All right. And then the other piece of tubing is gonna go right here. Push that on tight. Don't want anything coming loose here? Okay. Sweet. Insert it through here. That's what the top looks like. So let's see what happens. Here's these poor little kids at my mercy. Woo. Just gonna tap one of them. See what happens. Okay, he's kind of swinging like he would swing on a swing in the backyard. Now let's try doing this. Ah, oh no. <laughs> They're all getting caught. Woo! But they're swinging out. If I rotate the dowel rod, the faster I rotate it, the further they swing out. <laughs> oh, I would not want to be on this swing. No, no way. Oh my goodness, they're getting hurt. Ah! Ah! <laughs> okay, so this activity is another example of centrifugal force. Normally a swing would move in a straight line, but when you set the stick in a swirling motion, the swings fly out in a circle. The centrifugal force of the swings, or the centrifugal force of the strings pulls the swings toward the stick, the center of the disc, and keeps them moving in a circle instead of a straight line. Some of you immense parks have rides that swing people 300 feet up in the air at 30 miles per hour. Do you have what it takes to give it a whirl?
I have never actually been on the swings at an amusement park because I knew I was gonna freak out. What's one thing you never want to do in a car? Crash! What's one thing you totally want to do in a bumper car? Crash! We are breaking rules at the amusement park. Oh yeah. Okay, so for this experiment, I'm gonna use these two bumper car discs, these two bumper car labels, these foam bumpers, water bottle caps, and two balloons. Oh, I am so excited about this. Okay. So before we get started, I'm going to try moving this disc across our smooth surface here to see how fast I can get it going. It's not going very far, and it's not going very fast. Let's see if we can fix that. Alright, let's start here with this blue bumper car. Okay. Ooh. One cool blue bumper car coming right up. And oh my heck, is that a purple bumper car I see? <laughs> that one was made just for me. Purple is my favorite, favorite color. Woo, looking good. I'll put the orange bumper for the purple car. Right now here, same thing in the back. <laughs> Holy cow, I'm getting jittery. This is so awesome. Ah, ah, it's kind of sticking. Okay, one down, one to go. I use my green bumpers on the blue car. Go. Just like that. And just like that. Cool. <laughs> Look at those two cool cars. Okay, now we've got our water bottle lids. <laughs> this is such a fun, fun kit. I'm just loving this. <laughs> Okay, we screw those on. Okay, all right, this is gonna be interesting. We've gotta blow up a balloon, put it over this cap, and then open the cap. And it's supposed to like fly across the room. Okay, I'll try the purple car first here. Okay, okay, so wait. <laughs> okay. All right, now that the balloon is on here, I'm supposed to pull the cap up. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Um. That didn't work. <laughs> so, ah, oh, for one thing, my bumpers are sticking. Let's try this again. Okay, wait, that has to be closed. And then we'll put this over. Okay. Okay, ready? Steady. Oh, it's sticking. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Okay, well, it didn't really move, though. Try that again, but it did. It did actually float up, which is super freaking cool. Hover, ah, get on there. No, come on. Okay, here we go. Um, you pull this up and wait. Did I... ah! It's not doing anything. Oh, there. It moved a little bit. Wow, it's hovering. Okay, let's try out this other one. I want to try this blue car and see if it does any better. Okay, ready, steady, come on, blue car, you can do it. Woo! Ah! Okay, this one is moving. Okay, that is sweet. So what's really cool is that you can get a friend and you could put these against each other like on a kitchen floor, just a smooth surface, and they can ram into each other. That is so awesome. So the difference between just, just scooting this disc around and having the balloon here is that the air was actually lifting the disc a little bit up and moving it. That was super, super cool. But why did the disc fly better under balloon power? That's because the balloons created a cushion of air under the disc, 
which reduced a thing called friction. Friction is the rubbing of one object against another. In this case, that would be your disc rubbing against the floor tabletop. This rubbing will slow down an object in motion. The balloon created a layer of air between the disc and the floor, cutting out on friction, allowing them to move faster and more smoothly. So, at the amusement park, there's no balloons attached to our bumper cars, so how do they move? So, they move because there has been graphite sprinkled on the floor of the bumper car ride. It's really, really slippery. And that gets rid of the friction underneath the cars at the amusement park. Save the best for last. Are you ready for the thrill ride of them all? Roller coasters, woo! Roller coasters are like wild, crazy trains. Their tracks make you go up super high hills and then drop you so far so fast your stomach feels woozy. Some coasters loop upside down and some even leave you hanging. Let's find out how they work. Let's see, we've got this little ball here and this is a magnetic stick. I'm gonna hook the ball to the stick. Ah! Drag it on up here to, whoa, where am I at? Starting point three. Okay, it's like in a different order. Ah! Let's try that again. Alright, ready, steady, go! So what keeps us on a roller coaster when we're upside down? How come we don't just fall off these tracks? The track is the centrifugal force that keeps the cars moving in a circle as they go around the loop. Woo! That's what happens to the coaster during a ride, but what about the people? What's happening to them? Roller coasters change the way people experience gravity. No kidding! Woo! Remember, normally you don't feel that constant IG pull of gravity. When you're on a coaster and it's climbing a hill, you feel gravity trying to pull you back down. You feel more than IG, like you weigh more, and you're pulled to the back of your seat. As you drop down the hill, you fall with the coaster train. It feels like you're floating, like you're being pulled out of your seat, because now there's less than IG acting on you. All the excitement you feel on a coaster is really just a change in the way gravity pulls on you. Okay, we're gonna try starting point number one. Ready, steady, release! Ah! Let's see what happens if I stand it straight up. Oh, it just gets stuck right there. As coasters keep adding more hills and loops and corkscrews, they're also getting longer. The track of the longest steel coaster measured more than a mile and a half. <laughs> Bye, happy humans! If you enjoyed this video, let me know by clicking the like button below. Bye!